All right, round two. And I assume we're on the draw. Okay, so we have red, white. We don't have our main color, but I'm still going to keep this hand because we still have turn two and three plays, so I like it. All right, Seeker of the Way, Foil, quite good. There's a blue source, but I think our plan is just Bonkin. So next turn, I can play our blue source plus Outlast, which I might actually do. Even though I could do the Lurkers. Lurkers might actually be better, morphed. And a swing with the Bonkin, because I'm assuming he's swinging with the Seeker. And the reason I think it's better is because I can unmorph this for four. All right. Playing against Abzan. No blocks. All right successfully raided us, so I guess I'll get rid of an extra red source that we don't need. Alright, another tap land. Well, I think I'm going to play the more protective angle here. So I'm going to play the backwater, and I'm going to outlast and I'll pass. All right, no plays, so I guess the plan is, hmm, I guess we do Cliffs plus Canyon Lurkers morphed, and then pass. Still swinging with both, so he's probably got like a feat of resistance, which tells me I should probably block something. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let him just attack. So he could have awakened the bear. Could have a world of different things, and I don't know what they are. So I guess the best move is block the I can't do anything about feet. I was thinking that I can block seeker plus block skull hunter, but I'm not sure if I want to trade my Do I want to trade my lurkers for a skull hunter right now? Not really. I think we'll just block the skull hunter. Can't do anything about feet, as I said before. Can't do anything about Awaken the Bear. Can't do anything about either of those. Hmm. It's an interesting one. Well, that actually worked out well for us. Um, he ended up exiling our guy after we blocked, so we really just take three and make him lose an Abzan charm, which honestly is not that bad for us. All right, Herald of Anafenza is not bad either. Can start outlasting. Um, 
I can't really race too well. But I can get in, unmorph, get in for 5, take him to 18, drop a herald, and then this thing is nice and unmorphed. So even if he's cracking in on me, I can keep busy with this and playing spells. My alternative one is play Elder, leave up Crippling Chill, chill the Seeker of the Way. Maybe even after he attacks, so I could take the damage, but my guy will become 2-3, so I could kill the Skull Hunter. Um, I kind of like getting in for 5. It does take us to 10, which is admittedly is a bit risky. But this guy being 5 power is pretty big, and being able to outlast plus potentially Crippling Chill or... I mean, a, a perk of playing Elder and Crippling Chill is Warden of the Eye can bring back Chill. It's probably the best time-buying method. So I guess I'll just swing for 2. Play Elder, leave up Chill. I guess I, I did mention that... I can Crippling Chill now... If I Crippling Chill now, he doesn't attack with the Skull Hunter. Unless he's got a trick. I kind of want to eat the Skull Hunter since it can block my 5 2. I'm going to take some damage from Seeker here. I did have a long pause there, which definitely gives him some. All right, so he is going to fearfully play around it, which is actually fine by me, too. I still want to draw cards and do nasty stuff like that, so I don't have an issue there. We only have one white source, so I can't do Defiant Strike and Herald. <laughs> Guess that we swing Elder. No blocks. So we don't have to Defiant Strike, so I guess we'll just dish some damage out to him here. Draw our card, Battle Priest, so get rid of the island. Um, these guys are a little bit awkward only because I have one white source. I mean, they're not like horribly awkward, it's just I would like another white source. I guess we play the Battle Priest because it makes the best use of the mana. That way, if I draw a white source, I can play the Herald. Hmm. Still no plays, interestingly. So, I guess the plan is swing with Elder. Alright. So, I'm going to use it. Mystic's not bad either. Do I want the land more? Not really. But, yeah, I guess... I guess we ditch the land... So, now I could Outlast plus play Morphed Mystic. It's probably the best. Could also Unmorph this. For blocks on the Seeker next turn, which isn't bad. I mean, I do want to get rid of the Seeker, but I also want more board presence, so I think I'm just going to Morph and pass.
All right. Willie Loxodon's a pretty big dude. But I've got a crippling chill I can get out of my yard for that. He probably should have swung with the Seeker first, but he didn't uh, fake anything. All right. Well, I can play Treasure Cruise, which is not bad. I can actually play it and leave up the white to Outlast or play Herald. almost want to be on the Outlast plan now. Um, Lurkers can do some stuff. Mystic can do some stuff. Kind of got to get the Warden down for the Crippling Chill to deal with the the Loxodon. But the issue there is then I can't Outlast. But it's probably okay. I think we do it anyway. So I'm going to Warden. We're going to get back our Crippling Chill. And then I'm going to pass. And I'm going to be willing to take some damage from Woolly Loxodon. Become Immense will not kill me, so I've got that going for me. Alright, Suspension Field for our Lifelinker is my guess. Which is a problem, but not the end of the world. So a race, I think, should come in for the suspension field. It's always nice to be able to instant speed, blow that up, activate prowess, get back my dude. Oh, he's going all in. All right, well, we're going to have to chump block, but certainly not the end of the world. He's gaining a million life this turn, too, but I think I'm still okay with that. So I think the blocks are going to be Elder on Loxodon, Warden on Skull Hunter. Although, I could do a double block on the Seeker, which isn't bad. I mean, first and foremost, let's chump here. So then, I think I could dump these two to kill that. Or I could just dump my Morph to kill that, which also isn't bad. I do like the Mystic, though. I kind of want to take out the Seeker. Seeker certainly feels like a bigger deal, but I don't want to lose two guys either. I think I'm just going to give up my Mystic for this Skull Hunter. And the reason I'm giving up the Mystic rather than the Warden is, I want to have the Warden in case he can activate Prowess again. So, this is fine. Let's see if we get an untapped land. We do not. Okay, so I could do Treasure Cruise... And hope to draw an untapped land in three cards, which seems likely. And then if I can do that, then I can Crippling Chill the Loxodon on his turn. Leave back the Warden, swing with the Lurkers, potentially start getting in. He's in top deck mode also, which is pretty beneficial for us. So let's just... Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight million... All right, did get an untapped land. In fact, we drew three lands, so let's play the land. Let's swing with the Lurkers, and we'll pass. I think what we're going to do is upkeep. Since he already knows about Crippling Chill, I'm going to upkeep Crippling Chill. That way, I'm not going to let him draw into a... Uh, I'm not going to let him draw into a... What is the word I'm looking for? Uh, feet of resistance. All right, Highland game is not problematic at all. All right, timely horde mate. Not all that good. Kind of want to get this butcher down. It seems pretty relevant, uh, especially alongside this herald. I do like that, but we only have one white source again. So, I guess we play the Crag. We play Crag. We play Butcher. Because he's in top deck mode and I want to gain some life. 
could also do Herald plus Bloodfire Expert, but no, I think it makes more sense to get our Butcher out there. And we're not going to sacrifice anything, even though I could get haste. We're just trying to win through attrition here. All right, Hooting Mandrills. Pretty good, but not the end of the game yet. All right, so we fate more card draw. What is the game plan now? Okay, so this is going to untap, so I need something to block it with. For sure, when I get this Herald down, if I do that, how many resources do I have? Then I have, currently I have seven resources. I can play this, plus play this, but then I can't unmorph this. I can play this and still unmorph this, which isn't bad. I may have to do it just for the chump block aspect of it, but... I think that's okay, too. Yeah, that actually is okay. Could also play the Herald Chump Block, and I can get it back with Timely Horde Mate. It's actually not bad, either. But I feel like more likely I'm going to double block the Loxodon Unmorph. I do kind of want to do that and just take care of Loxodon. Then I'm taking Mandrills, potentially. So if I'm doing that, then I probably just play the Expert. I think I just play Expert. And then pass. Although, well... Hmm. Guess I don't have to, do I? Alright, I play Expert. And I play Herald. Now what this is going to do is play the land. I can Defiant Strike. Um, I think I want to leave Butcher back this turn. Cause, all right, what? how is he swinging next turn? Because my plan is Defiant Strike, which is going to Prowess Pump that which means I can block with Expert and Warden on the Loxodon, but I can put the Defiant Strike somewhere where I can maybe kill a Mandrills, but... I'm just going to stay defensive this turn. The reason I'm staying defensive is, if he attacks with more than one creature, I want to be able to give lifelink and net some life out of the exchange, potentially. Might not be correct. I maybe should have attacked there. Did draw land, though, and let us know about it, so that's good. No fears there. Definitely playing it safe. All right, he is doing the mandrills, too, so... Um, let me think about this. Definitely should have attacked with Butcher. Alright, so best options. I can... What are my best options? I think what we're doing is... Am I going to take the Mandrills? Should have attacked with that Butcher. I know what I was thinking. Let me think about this. Let's let's block. Let's double block this guy. Am I gonna take mandrills? Guess I'm taking mandrills. Not thrilled about it.
All right. I used that much time. My mind just got blown. I used way too much time. I have no idea how I possibly used that much time. That's crazy. I used eight, seven to eight more minutes than my opponent. That is insane. All right, let's get lifelink. Get in for five. And I think we actually just hard cast the... Uh, I can't believe I used that much time. This is game one. I used that much time. Well, I got to play like my life depends on it because the game depends on it. And I've used seven more minutes than my opponent. That is absolutely bonkers. I seriously completely no comprehension of how much time I used. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. All right, let's block here and let's block this guy. Could have a spell to pump his guy, but I'm still going to do it. All right, parapet doesn't matter. I've got to play so fast here. How could I have taken that much time? I'm so uh, upset with myself. Just because it's like, it's like I went in a black hole. How did I, how did I possibly use that much more time? I had no idea. Narrating these cons of Tarkir drafts are, it's been so stressful. It's so difficult to do it. Um, all right, I guess we pass. I could have played Timely Horde Mate there, but I think I'm actually just going to weave fate or force away if I have to, I guess. More likely just weave fate. Maybe it's because my tap lands take, like, extra time to tap, too. Just extra seconds I don't want to be worrying about. It doesn't help that I'm, I am have to beat him in a really slow and, like, agonizing way, too. Just do Bloodfire Expert, or Timely Horde Mate, rather, for no value. I have nine cards left in my deck. Jeez. I need to pay attention to the clock more. That's what it boils down to. Alright, that was a good draw. Damn it. <laughs> Didn't want to do that. All right. Nine and a half minutes, and I've still, even if I win this, which, I mean, right now it looks like we are, but he's in Dune Blast and in Hostilities Colors, which is not ideal. Just force away his guy that gains him life. Get some lifelink. Guess I don't need to play that just in case. Draws a board wipe. All right. 
So a race for suspension field. I guess that's the only enchantment I saw, so it might not be worth it because Smite the Monstrous definitely seems relevant. I got to play so fast, too. Jeez. I hate that feeling. I do hate that feeling. We haven't seen Flying Crane Technique yet, either. That's weird. All right, so I have to play really fast, guys. I, I'm still, I'm so mind-blown about how slow I've been. Holy crap. Seven minutes behind my opponent. Well, at least we're snap-keeping. That's a good sign. That was a good draw, too. Uh, backwater, sure. For the blue source. I guess they're both blue sources. Alright. Let's do... Cove plus Seeker and then Pass. I think I'm debating whether I want to take the Grizzly. I'm okay with trading. Yeah, now I'm much more okay with trading. He doesn't want to trade. All right. Let's do Scoured Barons and start heralding it up. And I guess at this point we're just going to move towards a Flying Crane Technique for the win. Just a couple resources away from making that happen. All right, so got that. We'll do this guy again. And I think we'll just leave up the force away in case we need it. And pass. So now we're just one resource away from Flying Crane Technique, though it is not lethal. So something to keep in mind. But it will be lethal once we get probably an expert online, I guess. We're rapidly getting to the point where um, I think I'm actually going to just double block this with Warriors, because then if he has a trick, the Force Away is going to be much more brutal. I feel like it's a good trade for us. Even though it takes away four damage for, from our Flying Crane technique, I still think it's, it's pretty good for us. All right, so we'll discard uh, Force Away, I guess. Oh, jeez. It's a lot of Mardu Skull Hunters. Um, chill. All right. So let's do this. Get our dude. Play this dude. And how much damage are we away from it now? Not actually sure. I feel like we're probably close, though. I'm going to take it. We'll see what it is. All right. Oxidon, take a bunch of damage. Can Lurkers. Uh, I guess we just hard cast the Lurkers. Still need another land. I uh, can't do anything else, though. Damn it. All right, let's just, uh, well, guess we hard cast this guy. Because that's 10 damage off of a Flying Crane Technique, so I'm pretty sure at this point we've got lethal off Flying Crane Technique. I think just to play safe, I should probably play another Lurkers. All right, mandrills does not matter. No attacks is kind of surprising. 
There's a butcher. Jeez, all right. Well, let's get that guy down too. And then I'm going to, I think, sack the warrior. Get haste. Get in for five. Just need a land, and then we're in flying crane technique territory. Which is certainly lethal. Um, kind of just want to block here. I don't have to, but I'm going to. All right. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Let's play the... God, I want to play Flying Crane Technique. Let's Defiant Strike. Well, let's swing with these three. It's Defiant Strike here. I guess that's a bit dangerous. I probably should have done it on the Elder, because I'd rather him take that out. But let's go ahead, I guess, and gain our life. Still digging for land. Still can't find a land. All right. Ditch that. Play. Well, let's just do this then. Get another dude. We are certainly a land away from winning with uh, Flying Crane Techniques. He was just off white that whole game, I see. I, pro I probably should have noticed that. <laughs> Is he going to blow us out with Dune Blast now? All right, Krumar is not a big deal. No, let's attack first, and then Flying Crane Technique. And it untaps them, too. How did I not know that? And I played with it in my last draft, and I still didn't know that. All right, sweet. Well, we got the game. Very nice. We'll see you in round three.